Hello, welcome, welcome, gorgeous beings of light. This is Elmara coming to you with the 100 Miracles in 100 Days project and the fifth dimension activation and effortless manifesting. Quickie. We're at miracle number 50. Oh, I can't remember, 52 or 53. We'll just have to be a surprise. I'll, I'll type it in at the end of it. Sorry, everybody. Been meditating too long again. So let's just start. For those of you landing here for the first time today, if you want more information on the full activation, go back to early December when the first awareness activation, which is a little bit different because we're now doing a fifth dimension activation. And the best way to get the most out of these is to breathe and focus on your breath and stay focused on your breath and then release anything that comes up especially if you get irritated with my chatting because that will be some healing taking place for you so let's begin by just taking a big deep belly breath in or a soft gentle breath in through the nose and out through the mouth a sigh or a bit of sound. <sighs> the key is to focus on your breath as it will keep you centred within. Once you feel your awareness move within, can you return to breathing in through the nose and out through the nose? If you wish, you can breathe in through the nose and then hold it for as long as it's comfortable. And then breathe out through the nose. Not only is this really good for bringing your awareness within, but this awesome article the other day about how oxygen kills cancer, but cancer can't exist in a really oxygenated environment, meaning your body. So doing lots of deep breathing is also very good for keeping all sorts of yucky diseases away like that. So, And it's been scientifically proven. Don't you just love that when it comes to life? I knew that a long time ago, but you know, these days now, if we have some scientific proof, people believe it. So, so just breathe. And protect your awareness down into your hands. And breathe in. Point your fingers to the sun. Breathe out and tie the energy from your fingertips around the sun. Now you're going to breathe in and bring a scoop of that gorgeous energy from the sun down through your being and out, the last 5% out and down into the core of Mother Earth, tying it around the big golden sun in the centre of Mother Earth. Breathe in, bring all the Earth energy back up you need to sustain your physical life here on Earth and breathe out. Take the last 5% up to the sun, breathe in. Through the nose if you can, unless you're releasing it out through the nose as well. Earth energy up. Breathe most of it into your body and last 5% up to the sun. One more time. Drawing that gorgeous, gorgeous source light that gives light and life to everything on earth down through your crown. Breathing it out into your 100 trillion cells and your 100 trillion telomeres. And take the last 5% down into Earth. Bringing all that Earth energy back up. And breathing that into your body. Last 5%. 
up to the sun. And I want you to continue that breath now while I speak to you about our miracle for today. So this one kind of ties in with yesterday with the lawnmower, ride on lawnmower in Tilba Tilba. I had so many miracles happen on that farm. I could probably do a hundred miracles, but I'm trying to pick the highlights of them. This miracle also relates to my father, who was an atheist before he passed. Took 1,075 souls home with him when he did pass and became this real champion working on the other side for human beings on earth <laughs> to pay a bit of penance for his bad behaviour, I think. <laughs> But anyway, if you've not listened to, I think it's Miracle 45, it's really a powerful miracle about how we took 1,075 souls home when Dad passed. But what I also wanted to share about that was the other night, um, I was doing it before bed because it has got some cracking energy in it. And also too, because at the point where I'm telling the story, where the 1,075th soul goes home, and I get caught with pure source, pure God source at that moment, it's really, it's almost like it's recorded on the recording and it's quite palpable and, and you can feel it and it just fills every cell of your body. But what I wanted to add was because I was doing it at night time, my beautiful misty cat was asleep on the bed. And as we got to that part, just before we, we took the last 1,075th soul home, she sat up from being curled up in a pool sleeping. And she's just looking all above me, all above my head and looking from side to side. And until I come back down into my body, she just was that amount of time, which is not long on the thing, but she's still looking up and gazing from side to side above my head against the wall. So obviously a whole pile of souls came in when I was just doing the replay. So you might, if you're sensitive enough, actually feel your own loved ones come in when you do that, if you've got loved ones on the other side you'd like to speak to. And if you want to ensure that that might happen, you can always ask before you do the recording, hey, Uncle Jim, Mum, Dad, Grandma, Granddad, someone you love on the other side, if it's possible for you to pop down and say hello, I would be so grateful. You know, There's nothing more fantastic about knowing that our spirit is eternal and that we don't lose our loved ones when they pass away. They just are in a different form. And this was all common knowledge 2,000 years ago and it's all been hushed up by a church that wanted you to believe in a heaven and a hell. So that's just my humble opinion for which my Catholic mother wants me shot. <laughs> anyway, let's breathe. So in this miracle, I was taking a walk up to Gulliga Mother or Mother Gulliga or Mount Dromedary as she's known in the white man's language because I live right on the track and I was taking my little dog for a walk and I'd started some health kick obviously, <laughs> otherwise I would have been sitting on my bum meditating at home. Um, and as I walked past to go up, there was like remnants halfway up to the mountain. It was only a kilometre up the mountain. There was remnants of an old building and tin and everything. And um, on my way up, the, there's no wind, there's no anything. But as I'm walking past, the, the, the tin starts like, like, rattling as if the wind had got it and was swap it was rattling it from side to side and Jack stopped and looked and was barking which he wouldn't do that if it was just wind it's more indicative of there being a spirit there and so I just kept walking up to the hill and on my way back down and while I was walking I got this sense that there was somebody there a spirit that could see that I could take them home because um, I'm not sure if I've mentioned one of the miracles. I probably should. I was a gatekeeper. I'm sure I have I mentioned that I was a gatekeeper for about 10 years before my dad passed and I passed the 
the baton onto him so I could go on and do some other things. But I lived obviously at the biggest cemetery in Brisbane, um, on the north side, and then I moved to the south side, and also the biggest cemetery on the south side as well, like two blocks from that. But I lived right opposite it on the north side. So anyway, I used to take lost souls home because they would come visit me and they got too many in the end. So. That's another story. If I haven't told it, I'll check and see if I've told it, but I'm sure I have. It was when my Claire audience was just waking up. I kept hearing all these people in my lounge room and I thought I was going potty. <laughs> uh, but anyway, back to this story. So I walk past. As I'm walking up the hill, I kind of get a sense that there is someone there. When I'm coming back down the hill, the tin, again, wasn't rattling till I got close to it. Then it starts, there's no wind anywhere, but it's like the wind's blowing it and this sheet of tin is going backwards and forwards and making a hell of a racket and I stop. And I say to them, look, um, if you're a spirit and you're lost and you want to go home, call out to my father, Terry Anderson, and he will go find your loved ones and take you home. And I will check back here tomorrow to make sure everything's okay but that's what happens now I no longer do them myself personally but you can call upon my father Terry Anderson ex-atheist now champion for God on the other side and he will find your loved ones and take them home and get you home and I keep going going home next day I walk up the mountain there's no no tin rattling nothing can't sense any spirits there feel like it's gone coming back down the mountain to home, I got a sense that it was someone who had suicided. So I spoke to Leslie and Richard. Um, Richard um, had, was one of the, their surname is Bate, Main Street of T Central Tilbury is called Bate Street. Um, the Bates are kind of long, long original settlers of Tilba Tilbur and Central Tilbur. They were brothers and think they became two towns because they fought or something I don't know but anyway Richard is a descendant of the original um, people landowners or landholders of um, Tilba Tilba and um, I said to him did any did, did anyone suicide or any any suicides there in that in in the township and he goes, oh, yeah, he goes, oh, about a, it's about 100 odd years ago, but it was a butcher. It was a, used to be a butcher up there. He said, and the butcher suicided. And I went, oh, <laughs> that must have been who it was. He goes, oh, yeah, because that, all that rubble there is left over from the old piggery. I went, oh, <laughs> that used to be there. And the butcher used to be up that hill as well. So there you go. There you go. So um, anyway. I never saw him again for the rest of the time I was there, so my father must have came and got him and taken him home. So, um, yeah, how exciting is that? Just proves again that our spirit is eternal, and if you don't get to go home when you're meant to, you will get stuck here, unfortunately, until some mad person like me comes along and knows how to open the gate for you. Or if you sense that you have a loved one who's stuck here, again, you can just call on my father, Terry Anderson, ask him to go find their loved ones and help them get home because this is what I believe is hell on earth is when you are no longer in a physical body and you didn't go home when it, when you passed away or maybe you suicided and therefore the gate didn't open for you to the time when you were supposed to go home and by that time you've kind of forgotten, you've just completely missed it usually and you get stuck here in the ether and you haven't got a body and you haven't, you know, you there's nothing you can do because you're just stuck. So Ashala wants to come get you. Alrighty. I'm just going to send you a blast of this fifth dimension energy. Quick blast. So just know that everything's possible and when loved ones pass away, don't get upset about it. It's their going home. 
and it's an angel you know by name on the other side. It was one of the greatest blessings of my life to be a gatekeeper for 10, 12 years because I learned so much about death and dying and it made me no longer fear dying as well. So, alrighty. It's in this place, when in this centered place connected to the fifth dimension, you can also go, how can I, and ask for what you want. Much easier to manifest it when you're up in the higher dimensions of light. And just breathe and let it go. All right, we're going to keep this one short today. And I'm sending you so much love. I wish you a truly blessed day. I look forward to being with you all again tomorrow. Blah, blah, blah. And bye for now.